Hi everyone, I'm William Donnarumma, professor in filmmaking here at the University of Notre Dame. I'm also a director and cinematographer and editor on my own projects that span both narrative and documentary filmmaking. Now, when it comes to color, I've always understood color and worked in color in different ways, but I'm working towards becoming a better colorist, really understanding color management and workflows and pipelines and applying that within DaVinci Resolve. Coming across Color Lab AI has been a godsend really in being able to further my understanding and application of how color will work within Color Lab AI and then being able to apply it into my larger project in uh, DaVinci Resolve. My latest project was a theatrical musical production, an original work that due to COVID restrictions we couldn't perform live so we had to make a movie out of it. Now what's interesting about working in theater is that we still wanted to make it look like a theatrical production while being a movie and where we're going to cross those lines. This is an instance where lighting changes become very, very important when you're looking at a theatrical production to understand when scenes are changing and when emotions are changing. It's very different than coloring a film where you have more subtle instances of how it will shift between different scenes from cool tones to maybe warm tones. In this instance, I shot uh, this musical called An Old Family Recipe on Helium 8K camera and my little 6K Komodo. And I was able to go in and make changes within color management and camera raw settings to match these cameras fluidly because I did run into a little bit of a snag and having a difference in how they were processing their own color science. So I'll show you an example of that. Then I was able to take reference stills, which is really what I love about Color Lab, and apply a certain look to these particular scenes and in one scene in particular that I'm going to show you. What I love about that process is that this shot here could look as cool and contrasty as Tenant, or as warm and glowy as, say, The Godfather. That's a clip that I've actually used to apply to this particular film. So what I'm about to show you is a particular scene where Tony, the main character, has an encounter with her recently deceased grandmother and then her extended family comes in and we'll see the lighting changes occur adding amber and some yellows and things of that nature and i was getting kind of a yellowish cast on skin tones and i wanted to try to make that more subtle and while i was trying to pull that out um, using different techniques it wasn't as successful as i was hoping so by taking this reference still from the godfather and um, placing that onto a particular shot and then manipulating it from there, I was able to then export a LUT and then move my way along the scene, making little adjustments along the way and apply it to that entire scene and give it a kind of warm, familial, glowy feel that I was actually looking for. I need now need to go back and actually apply that to other scenes within this film because I had to work in such a short period of time. We basically shot a feature length musical over the course of the month of March into April and then had to edit the whole thing together and then apply these color matches from beginning of April to a live streaming event to showcase the film at the beginning of May. I think you all understand what a short time frame that is and Color Lab AI enabled me to apply that look get through that scene and make adjustments on some of the other scenes and luckily get to uh, the first finish line on this project. Now I hope to go back and actually do that to a number of different scenes along the way um, and make this film look even better going into fall. Let's take a look at an example of that scene I mentioned from an old family recipe. Okay, so I've opened up Color Lab AI. I have my DaVinci Resolve project open here with a scene that I've been talking about from an old family recipe. And so this is when the grandmother comes in and is meeting Tony and having a discussion about how they're going to have a little cooking lesson together. So you see all the raw footage here, right? But what's interesting is that the A camera footage in, uh, on the Helium is different than my B camera footage on Komodo. And you'll notice that it's actually a little softer, even without any color profile on it. And if you look over into the image settings and the metadata, you'll see that this is an IPP2 log3d10, but this is BT1886. 
that became an issue, especially when I actually did apply any color to them and that one had that, you know, con more contrasty look, uh, kind of a harder edge look. So the first thing I needed to do in talking to my pal Dan Duran at Red is come up to my project settings and come into my camera raw. So, you know, we're talking a lot about color management. I'll just stay in 709 2.4 and down into camera raw this is where it was defaulting to it's actually going to 10 all right so i've already set it to 16. all right uh, raw profile i want to stay in red and then in here i want to go to project all right so now i've got um, ipp2 red wide gamma uh, 3g10 um, we can go uh, we can stay on no blending and I want to make sure these weren't checked on before either. I want to make sure that these are all checked on using camera metadata. When that wasn't, this was automatically defaulting to 320, so everything was really dark. Um, and then we like to keep on chroma noise reduction set to medium. We save that, and then all of my footage uh, now from my A camera here is matching my B camera. Um, being the Komodo. This was because of a firmware upgrade that I hadn't done at the time that now forces it all into this this different color space. So that was the first thing I needed to overcome. I go back into Color Lab AI and go to Fetch. We will fetch the project in and just like you've probably seen in a lot of other tutorials it's identifying the cameras and the color space that it should be in and here we go so you can tell that it is very kind of yellow it's got a lot of yellow in it um, i can still see the wall back there there's my flat profile here which i think freaked a lot of people out when they were first looking at you know some of this as they mostly do before we added any any color space on to uh these kinds of shots but if i want to come in and what I wanted to do was I wanted to soften that a little bit. I, I had tried to play around with uh, the different different looks and it became a little too contrasty. I pulled some of the yellow out and I was doing it all manually. Um, but if I come in here and we'll come over to this shot, right? This actually has a little bit more of a contrasty edge. What I wanted to do was pull in that kind of brassy uh, soft tone from The Godfather. So. Granted, all right, so this isn't a family shot, but it actually had, you know, it was better than like using this shot in here. Um, I had another one from uh, another different dinner scene, actually, uh, you know, I was looking at here. This is um, another shot. And then um, I decided that this actually, and after having tried, you know, trial and error, that this actually provided the right tone that I wanted. So if I went into this shot in here, and went match to reference still. It's gonna make it a little bit darker, but see how much softer it is? You know, if I go back into my selected shots, difference between that and between this. It's just, it's taking out a little bit of that punch and a little bit of that yellow, and then I could still come into, I'll go into my show looks first. I picked a film profile and I, I sort of looked around and go, okay, that that's way too contrasty. That's a little bit more green, cooler. That brings out her hair a little bit more. And then this one's a little bit softer, one's a little bit warmer. So I started with a little bit warmer. Actually, the, the director wanted a warmer look anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that in there and go up to printer lights. We're gonna pop that up a little bit. I'm gonna bring down the yellow little bit and then I'm going to increase the contrast in there so just kind of making that back wall disappear a little bit more all right so that's already better um, than when it was so if I come in here see how that's pretty contrasted there there I'll probably start going in and manipulating this a little bit more um, I could probably bring it up a little bit more in here if we go over to our scope yeah it's still a little bit low um, but I'm not gonna mess with it too much right now um, because a lot of the other shots, some, some of them are a little bit brighter. Uh, cameras handled a little differently. The exposure was set differently. So whereas I can keep, you know, kind of pushing and pulling this around, we're going to go ahead and allow this look to kind of sit where it was. So here I just wanted to go to Resolve Push. We're going to go ahead and save this particular project. This will be a My Color Lab test. 
I have a five, send it into there, it's syncing. And it's finished. So if I pop back over to resolve, right, here's my shot, right? It has now taken in, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide those LUTs for now. All right, it's added in my node tree, right? And you'll see that's that show LUT that was applied, the film grade to it. And here's my output transform, my input transform, right, a little bit duller, and then some of the other uh, color aspects that were added as part of that match. Okay, so now what I would do, I mean, that was a multi-cam uh, clip in there. Um, and some of them are multi-cam, but they're still identified as the original camera source. So now I don't have them on all of them, right? I did surround with some of these in here, but that was the one we just did. And so I can just go ahead and copy that and paste that in. And I'll go ahead and I can reset this grade because I think I was, I was looking around at a couple of different things, all nodes and grades. And I'll go ahead and paste that in. And you see that all of them are, are a little bit different, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and start making some adjustments and bringing some of these up, some of them reducing some of the highlights. You'll notice later on, actually, this is a little bit more extreme um, in terms of the look itself, but it's the same, it's actually from the same camera. So it's applied it across all the different uh, clips that are on the timeline. And if I go a little bit later in here, see how this light actually comes up and it becomes even warmer. So if I apply these, you see how much much warmer that actually is. It's kind of what they want to do, you know, theatrically, but I'll have to make some other adjustments in there, right? Um, what I ended up doing too, to make sure I saved it, was I went back to Color Lab and then I went ahead and exported a LUT, right? So I export LUT for a selected shot that I had just done, all right? I'm gonna keep it in the color space. I created um, what was called, what we called it as um, Godfather, it was two, right? And save it into LUTs. And when I went ahead and imported it into DaVinci, I could go over to um, one of my other shots in here, go into my LUTs, my film looks, and there was Godfather two, right? Seven so nine, and so, and here, if I added a uh, serial node and then bring over the LUT. So I'm kind of doing two of the same things without pushing it forward. And now I could take that LUT and essentially apply it to any of these other grades. But then what I went ahead and just ended up doing was going into some of these shots individually, you know, and, and actually I started in here right, on one of my originals, right in here, right? And I might have wanted to bring back, you know, bring back a little bit of that temperature so it's not quite so warm on her in here. It's a little bit more natural, but it still has that kind of glow to it. Um, and then I would come in and maybe bring up my overall gain a little bit more, I see over the side, because I just want to make that bright. I, I tend to think that when I was going to a, a DCP output, it would make it a little bit um, even contrastier and a little bit darker. So I'm erring the side of, of actually being a little bit brighter, which is okay for theater anyway. And then I could just uh, paste that in here. And I could actually brighten these up a little bit more. And like that so um, so that's basically you know the, the simplified workflow for me and making it really fast and being able to come in and you know necessarily apply potentially you know this to an entire scene so if I went into this setting and wanted to sync this scene with resolve let's see what happens and switch back. I'm gonna go back to resolve here. And now suddenly, oh, well, this was everything forward, really, within that scene because I hadn't defined it. But like, you know, for instance, this shot, um, 
she had a lot of, you know, this is where everything's changing. So you see how that light is starting to come up. It kind of takes a different tone. I might pull a little bit more of that yellow out. And here it's got a lot of highlight in there. So there's times where you've got a lot of overhead light and I can just pull down that highlight a little bit on her face so it's not so harsh. It's me trying to, you know, deal with, you know, more theatrical lighting rather than, you know, more filmic lighting when you've got a lot of a lot of top light in there. And on this one in particular, I also could tell that, you know, if I wanted to come in here, um, I can see a little bit on the wall that I don't want to see. So I'll bring that down a little bit, you know, on that shot. So those are the little tweaks that I would make. But overall, it was just a great help of having, you know, trying to eliminate, I think, a little bit more of the um, that kind of yellowish tone and move more towards a warmer, softer tone on these shots themselves by being able to go ahead and match that to my reference being Al Pacino here in The Godfather. Most pastas end with Eni. Bucatini, Cappellini, Fedellini, Fettuccini, Linguini. Quattratini, Trippolini, Pagatini, Dittalini, Begziti. You see, Tony, it's very easy. I don't think ZT is an Eni. Shh. <laughs>